Oh, this is Phil at the Laptop Trader Channel on YouTube. Welcome back to our community. I'm here to share my experience. Get back to stock investing and trading community one video at a time. This video series is going to cover market cycles, stocks, and ETFs, technical analysis, trade entry, trade management, risk management, and how to create confidence by putting the odds in your favor. Good luck. My email contact is laptoptraderphil at gmail.com. Caution, most stock traders lose money. Please protect yourself at all times. Nothing discussed in this video is trading or investing advice. This channel is for informational purposes only. Please seek qualified help if you need help investing. So I'm proposing that you invest in your stock, invest in yourself. Start now by educating yourself on how markets work and finding out what is right for you. Invest in yourself, then invest in the market. So last month we had chapter one. Uh, just a quick review, chapter one concepts for our newest investors. Invest in yourself and gather information on investing or trading. I provided a recommended reading list last month of five books, which were have been very helpful to me. Become financially disciplined and have a personal budget and have some money for investing. Then uh, fund your employer-sponsored retirement plan first. Uh, what is We covered what is the relationship between interest rates, the inflation rates, and your money and how that affects you. We covered return on investment. Uh, as a percentage should be greater than inflation so that your money is actually growing so our return on investment or ROI we covered and then uh, we covered why can't I get ahead so we covered what is in my control so that's just a review if you haven't seen that I encourage you to watch last month's uh, chapter one video so here's what we are going to cover this month's basics of investing and trading Chapter two. This video is going to be a little bit wordy. It's going to be a lot of uh, charts or um, you know bar charts or candlestick charts. So this is more for newer investors, but it's a good video to review. So this month, what is a stock market or a free market? Um, there's over 8,000 stocks. What is a stock? What stocks, mutual funds, ETFs, index funds, or hedge funds? Which one is best? Who am I? Am I a trader or an investor? What are the costs of investing or trading? When do I buy or invest? How will my money grow? What are the definitions of return on risk, return on investment, or, or return on capital? Um, we're going to cover position size and money management. We have a limited supply of money, so we need to protect it. Why is this a good investment or trade for me? Uh, do we use fundamental or Tactical analysis or quantitative analysis? How can we be more selective with our investments? Why is price or price movement king? What is volatility? What is a price chart? Uh, which charting and or information platforms to consider? In three areas that I do not trade in and why? So we've got a lot to cover. Let's continue on. So again, what is a stock market or a free market? So a stock market is just a place to buy and sell stocks of companies and is open or freely open to those that wish to trade or invest their capital. Uh, there used to be many more barriers to entry like an account size or high fees, but today, it's very easy to access the stock market. At one time in the past, there were free markets, but not like today, where we have exchanges, like the New York Stock Exchange. They used to allow retail traders to trade or invest in shops, and these were more like gambling shops. And the advantage was for the house or the shop owner. Many times the owner would charge high fees or large spreads between the sale and the purchase price to make money on the transactions. 
Uh, it'd be very similar to modern casinos who have an edge over the gamblers. Today, around the world, there are exchanges which act as middlemen between buyers and sellers and other market operators, such as brokers and market makers. So, a market maker provides a willing and able buyer or seller at all times to make a liquid market. So, transactions happen quickly. A broker is a company you use as a retail trader to enter your transactions with online. Today's market environment is more friendly than ever to small investors with easy access and low transaction fees. They want your business, just like a store wants your business for groceries or home supplies or clothing. Um, so today there are over 8,000 stocks to choose from. So what stocks or funds or mutual funds or ETFs are best? So this is going to be a personal choice as to whether or not to buy and sell individual stocks or buy a group of stocks and diversify in a fund or a mutual fund. Mutual funds are generally run by large companies like Vanguard or Fidelity or others and offer great value, low costs, and risk spread across many stocks or markets and offer a diversified approach and professional management. You don't really have a choice of what is in the mutual fund. A stock is nothing more than a piece of ownership of that company. The stock will be priced as of that moment you purchase it and may go up or down in value. Individual stocks may offer higher reward, but also higher risk as your money is only with that company. In a fund, your money is spread out among many companies. ETFs or exchange traded funds are similar to a mutual fund but you can purchase or sell it yourself without calling the fund and requesting a transaction. So ETFs are very liquid and easy to enter and exit, just like a stock. For example, Vanguard will have an S&P 500 mutual fund you can purchase, or you can buy an, the ETF symbol SPY for similar exposure to the S&P 500 market index of 500 stocks. Both will have very similar performance. There are many funds and ETFs to choose from, hundreds of them. Some focus on a certain industry or sector, like energy. Some focus on growth or value or how much risk is involved. This is where you need to do some honest homework and figure out who you are and where you are at in life. Young and single, or are you older and the kids are grown up? So this is a personal decision. Please seek an investment advisor if you need help. Should I be an investor or a trader? Personally, this is up to you in a free market. I am both an investor long-term in my occupation, my ongoing study of the markets, my 401k mutual fund, my pension plan, and my trading of individual stocks and ETFs. I like the process of trading and the mental aspect of thinking about my trades. Long term, I like the stability of my retirement plan at work. I think if I was brand new, I would seriously consider investing in my employer's retirement plan and contributing as much as I could to it sooner rather than later and putting time on my side. Most often this plan will give you a limited choice of growth stock mutual funds. Compound interest really works over time as your ROI compounds and your money grows for you. If you want more trading education, stick around and watch our monthly market videos on how I put my trading plan into action using technical analysis and price charts. Trading is a high risk endeavor, but using risk management and trade management helps reduce some of those risks. The choice is yours, so good luck. What are the costs of trading or investing? So the cost of investing 
used to be quite high between 1900 and the 1960s. When Jack Bogle founded Vanguard, he sought to bring down those costs with low cost mutual index funds that invested in the total stock market. These mutual funds or index funds gave you diversified exposure to the market, meaning if the markets went up, your money went up. And when the markets went down, your money followed the market down. This essentially gave you the average market return over time of about 10.5%. Before this, funds did not cater to the small investor. They catered to those who already had money very similar to today's hedge funds. The cost of trading used to be oppressive, and also trading was reserved for those with access to seats at the market. If you wanted to trade, you had to pay high costs for entry and exit per trade through the exchange, and oftentimes you had to buy the seat. This favored large operators. Markets also used to have high bid ask spreads, and shares were priced in fractions like one eighth or one quarter. So maybe IBM, for example, may be 52 and a quarter per share. <clears throat> Today, with decimalization and lower fees, sometimes no fee, and tighter bid ask spreads, many times in pennies, the markets have become much more accessible and now operators want retail and small investors business. There are other costs to consider, one of them being opportunity costs. What is the cost of not investing and missing out and a better financial future? So that's one to think about. Another cost would be if you trade too much per trade and blow up your account. Now you are out of money, so that's another potential cost, not using risk management. What is the cost of not learning and increasing your knowledge of the market? I consider investing a lifelong learning experience. It is not easy, takes time, but in my opinion, has given me confidence and has been well worth it. When do I buy or invest or enter a trade? This is again going to be a personal choice, depending on your current finances, your budget, your financial statement, and where you are at in your life. For me personally, I have been an investor since about the year 2000 and a stock trader since about 2019. I did not always have the money or the confidence to be a trader, and that is okay. There's nothing wrong with working hard and saving money in a mutual fund with your employer's retirement plan. I know many millionaires who did just that. It may take 30 or 40 years, but it works. If you wish to trade in stocks, then you need to start learning more about risk and reward and money management, and how to evaluate companies either with fundamental analysis of a company's numbers or technical analysis, technical analysis of price movement on a chart or both. Then you can come up with a plan that makes sense for you that you can follow. For example, in my plan, I never buy a stock in a stage four downtrend or a stock showing relative weakness versus the market or its peers. From a fundamental view, I don't like to buy stocks with declining earnings per share. I'm sorry, declining EPS, abbreviated for earnings per share. If you don't understand this yet, it is okay. Stick around and stay tuned. So the next question that came to my mind when I first started trading was, how will my money grow? So ROI, or return on investment, is the most 
widely used metric for growth. If I invested $1,000 in a fund or stock and it grew 10%, it would be worth $1,100 at the end of that period of time, usually quoted on a yearly basis or 10% per year. If I made no more contributions and earned another 10% on the $1,100, I would now have a total of $1,210 compounding my gains or returns. ROI can be used on any time. So if you gain 10% in a month, that is really good. Compounding is how you win in the financial game. Some traders use ROC, or return on capital, or ROR, return on risk, as a way to identify a specific risk per trade or position. This just allows them to be more accurate and a way to evaluate how they are performing per trade. If I had a position of $1,000 in a stock and I used the stop loss strategy and reduced my risk to $100 for that trade, then I could calculate my ROR against the $100. If I gained only $50, then that would be a ROR of 50%. And an ROI versus the total amount invested of 5%. ROR and ROC are the same thing. Just be aware of other traders using this terminology. I think now you can see why traders wish to use strategies to actively reduce risk as it inflates their returns and performance while reducing the risk in any one stock or trade. What is risk management or money management? Money management starts at home with a written budget for your money. If you haven't done it yet, get it done. It will really help you with discipline and money management in the markets. Why? Because for most people, money is an emotional topic. Even though it is just a financial tool, it should be neutral. If you are going to actively trade stocks, then money management is crucial so that you do not make rash or emotional trading decisions and cost yourself money. Second, and just as important, you will have losing trades, and losing never feels good. If you set up your risk up front, then at least you can live to fight another day without losing all of your money. One very famous trader who made millions after blowing up several accounts learned the hard way about money management. In fact, as a successful trader, he only has about a 30% win rate. In other words, he loses seven out of 10 trades and still makes millions because of money and risk management and discipline, not because he is a great stock picker. Ignore money management and risk management at your own peril. Think about it. If you do not have the discipline to say no to fast food three times a week, do you have what it takes to trade stocks? Here are three basic rules to limit risk upfront. Your account size does does not matter. And I share this with my group every month because I don't want them to forget it. One, have a trading plan with specific things to look for, positive and negative, such as buy setups, breakouts, consolidations, earnings. Two, limit your position size or your overall risk to a percent or a, a dollar amount per trade. This is called my catastrophic loss or gap rule. What, would, what will cause you sleep loss if the stock goes to zero? 
So that's your position size. That's your overall risk. And number three, stop loss rule. Allows you to buy more shares, called share sizing. This further reduces risk by using a stop loss. If you're a new trader, for example, use $10 risk per trade. If you had a $2 stop loss, you could buy five shares. And that would either, that would equal a $10 trade risk. Be selective of your investments or trades. If you are a passive investor in a mutual fund, you won't have any choice in the investments in the fund. They do it for you. You can only select to pass or play. If you choose individual stocks, then you need to filter through 8,000 plus stocks. Which one do you choose? We need a filtering and selection process to do that. We can do that easily today with software and or platforms online or even our online broker. If I were brand new today, I would start with what I know. I would start with the company I work at if it is public and see what public information I can learn. Then I would select five or 10 companies that I know like Walmart or Apple and research them. Then I would watch every week or month charts or news reports or earnings announcements and see what happens. Does price go up or down? Is there growth in earnings per share or sales growth? Growth is the number one word on Wall Street and the markets. Earnings reports are the number one event for public companies. They generally happen every quarter or four times per year. How does your company react to this event? Are there growing sales, growing revenues, growing earnings per share, grower growth in users, net income, gross profits and net profits, etc.? Do I use technical, fundamental, or quantitative analysis. Technical analysis is the study of price graphed on a chart over a period of time. It may be a day, week, month, year. It really depends on if you are a day trader, or a position trader, or a longer term investor. Does not matter which time frame, as all charts will look the same. Price can only go up, down, or sideways in any time frame. I personally use monthly, weekly, and daily time frames. Price analysis is considered true, as you cannot lie about a purchase or sale, as it will show up in the data. For example, an analyst may upgrade a stock after a large move, and at the same time, a large fund is selling the same stock. This happens all the time, so be, uh, be aware of that. Fundamental analysis involves the study and comparison of the company fundamental numbers or metrics of their business. If they are a public company, they are required to make this information public for investors. The only problem with fundamentals is that people lie and CEOs like to stretch the truth and never talk bad about their company they represent. A famous case is Enron that went bankrupt. I do use some, fun, some fundamentals in my analysis. Quantitative analysis sometimes called quants, look to analyze all of the available information and price data of a company or market and assign a value to that versus other companies. 
quants use very smart people in computer programs to try to gain an edge over other market participants and have had some success in doing so. By using their skills, they come up with specific buy and sell rules on stocks they have identified as having higher probabilities of going up or down and profiting from these moves. Some famous quants include Jim Simons, who was a very successful quant who recruited mathematicians and others from universities to work at his fund. Some platforms like Seeking Alpha and Bar Chart do have some quantitative numbers you can use. They are essentially looking for the strongest stocks in the strongest industries. Is it any more successful? I don't know. As many, as many famous traders using charts have become very successful. Is it valid? Yes, it does work. Warren Buffett, who says he does not use charts or quants, is arguably the most famous of all who succeeded in picking stocks. I think it comes down to what makes sense to you. How much time do you have to commit and what are you comfortable with and what skills do you have or can you learn to help you focus on stock selection? Then you can clearly answer, is this a good investment or trade for me? That's a question that needs to be answered. What is a price chart and why is price king? A price chart is just a visual representation of what buyers and sellers bought or sold, whether it is a stock or ETF or commodity. Early stock traders used to graph prices on a piece of paper. Today we can go online and access this information. A price chart can be a line chart, bar chart, or a candlestick chart, or other styles. Most traders use a candlestick chart. By reading and analyzing these charts, we can come up with a directional bias for the most likely next move up or down. It takes some practice, but it is worthwhile. Price is king because that is how we make or lose money. If we buy a stock and it moves up, we make money. If it goes down, we lose money. Simple does not matter what the nightly news, the financial news thinks. We either make or lose money on price movement, period. If a company has a great quarterly report with growing sales and the stock gaps down in price, does the report matter if we lost money? I don't think so. Price is king in the markets. Volatility is simply the amount price moves in one direction, usually out of a normal range. Maybe a stock has a normal range of $1 a day, and the day after earnings it gaps up $3, and so that would be three times its normal activity. This would be considered more volatile. Generally, volatility to the downside is higher as most investors like stocks to go up. Think of fear to the downside or loss of capital. Volatility can also be seen on a chart many times. Large moves up and down repeatedly will be considered increased volatility. So the best way to show you a price chart is just to show you a chart. This is a company. This is company symbol U, WMC. This is a two-year weekly price chart using price candles and two moving averages. And on, the and on the bottom is a, a graph of the volume or the amount of shares that were traded during that week. So pretty basic. You can see from left to right, overall price has gone up in value. Next, I have a chart of, this is the S&P 500 ETF, symbol S, 
P, Y. This is just a simple line chart over a period of a two year period. And on the bottom again is volume traded for that period. And the little D with the square is just the time when there was dividends or a distribution of money to investors. That's all that means. But again, left to right on the chart over that period of time, it kind of went down and then came back up. So we're on the right price is higher than it was two years ago. So that's just a different representation. This is this is the same exact chart, the same exact information as the last one, same symbol, same time frame, but with candlestick um, bars. So you can see it just looks a little bit different. The information on a candlestick is just more detailed than a line chart which is why most traders use candlesticks. Again, you have price, you have two moving averages on here, you have the range of the chart, which is a weekly two year chart. Um, and then on the bottom, we have a volume profile. So I just put together this real quick of charting or some other information platforms to consider, not recommended. Some of these have free levels or trials, and some are paid subscriptions. No particular order or recommendations. I personally use barchart.com, and I have used Finviz, Stock Charts, Seeking Alpha, TradingView, and eTrade. All are pretty good. It's just a preference of how they present the information. So try these out and just see if you like any of them. TradeStation is a trading and charting platform in one, very popular with traders. Uh, Schwab Company, which is a very well established company, just acquired TD Ameritrade and the popular Think or Swim platform, sometimes symbolized as TOS or TOS. Um, e Trade is a popular low cost uh, broker, has a trading platform, they have some free charts. Um, you really can't customize the charts, so that's why I said the charts aren't very good. But it, it's an okay platform. I like it. Um, bar chart, it's easy to customize the charts and organize your charts. And there's quite a bit of information there, including fundamental and I believe some quantitative information. So that's one I use. Seeking Alpha is also very popular. It has lots of fundamental information, uh, some basic charts. It also has um, quite a community on there of recommendations, even some paid subscriptions through their community. So that's one that I use sometimes, but not, not as often. I do like their platform. It's, pretty, it's a pretty nice platform. Uh, Stockcharts.com is very popular, easy to read. Customize, you can create customized charts and chart lists. I use that for a long time. That's a very popular um, charting platform. Uh, trading View, also very popular. You can customize your charts. They have also different chart lists you can create and a social community on there. Um, Finviz, also very nice charts. And I think probably online, probably if not the best screening tool, a very an excellent screening tool to quickly sort the market to what is moving right now. So that's a popular one too. Finally, if you don't want to look at any of that, you can always look at Google, type in a company name or Yahoo, and you'll get free info and chart within seconds, even on your phone. So that's just some things to consider as far as researching um, stocks companies in the market. So let's move on to our next slide. Um, these are three areas I choose not to trade in. Uh, number one, biotech stocks. Individual biotech companies are too volatile for me and can be good one day and out of business the next. Uh, most do not make any money. Uh, I do invest 
and biotech ETF funds or a group of stocks like symbol IBB. So I do have some exposure to biotech. I just choose not to trade in the individual companies because one day they can have some good news. The next day they can, the FDA can say, sorry, um, that's not going to work. And the stocks get crushed. So that's why I don't really trade in those. I also don't trade new IPOs, which stands for Initial Public Offerings. Uh, these new companies generally do not make money and usually sell off after coming to market. They, they may even go up at first, but most sell off considerably. After a year, I will consider them after they have some sort of performance history or are popular like Uber. So. Just go look up a chart of Uber over the last, I think they came out three or four years ago, maybe five years ago. Just look what happened to Uber after the IPO. And you'll see why I generally don't trade IPOs. Uh, cryptocurrencies. Yes, they are popular and have increased in value, especially Bitcoin and Ethereum. None of them have any real underlying value or profits. There really is no way of assigning value. It is just price going up or down on a chart. Um, most are really not used as currencies. Time will tell. I would rather invest or trade something I understand and make money and not have, have the risk of crypto going to zero. It's just my preference. I'm not putting them down. If you like cryptos and you're comfortable investing in them, go for it. I am just not comfortable with those. So. That's some ideas there to consider. Uh, before I ever enter an investment or a trade, I use a free trade checklist. Um, this is part of my trading plan. It instructs me where and when to enter or exit using trends, stages, clues, um, bar by bar analysis, and other factors. So I have that on a file I would share that if you want to send me an email I'd share my checklist with you it's kind of long but um, it's very helpful so that is all for chapter two in this 12 part series thanks for watching liking sharing and subscribing to laptop trader channel be sure to tune in to our monthly market video for in-depth technical analysis any questions can be sent to laptoptraderphil at gmail.com. Or if you want to, um, if there's a subject you would like me to cover on the next month's video, send that question there. We will see you next month for Chapter 3. Bye.